Ignition timing. What is it? What it's influenced by and what you have to look out for when looking at a ignition table, for example, or when in general, for example, looking at logs from maybe a stock car or whatever else. First of all, what is ignition timing? Ignition timing in most cases is also called ignition advance, which means if you look at the crankshaft at top dead center, so when piston one and four are at the most top part of the uh, cylinder or the bore, and this is top dead center. And if you go a certain amount of degrees before top dead center or before that piston or those pistons reach top dead center then that that number of degrees is the timing advance so it is the timing before top dead center and that is where the spark plug fires so that's spark timing or ignition timing and depending on what load state or what engine or what situation what boost level your car is operating in it needs to run at different uh, degrees of timing so that the engine doesn't experience knock or detonation which i'm going to explain in a future video but let's focus on the ignition timing first first of all i have a timing map right here this is just to demonstrate what specific areas of timing are mean or what they are uh, good for and what timing numbers approximately um, are going to be or you're going to see there. First of all, we have the idle right here. When your engine is running at idle, so between let's say 700 RPM and 1200 RPM, maybe on cold start, this is an area this is the area where it would run at or rather where an engine would run at and where you would see timing levels of about de depending on what kind of engine uh, 5 to 15 degrees the reason for that is because the combustion process is not happening very fast and on these ignition levels if you are running relatively low timing levels you are generating a more complete combustion. This means that less harmful gases are coming out of the exhaust, which means when you are, for example, doing a smog test or ins inspection and they do um, stick an exhaust probe into your exhaust pipe and testing the exhaust, um, if the ignition timing is wrong, that result or those results can actually uh, get you to fail the smog test and when these ignition timing uh, numbers are too high or too low certain amounts of gases can be at a wrong number and most of the times it's going to be too high for example in NOx or CO those most of the time are the values that can be wrong and those do not have to do much with uh, lambda while yes that influences those as well but if you are running lambda one the wrong ignition timing can still change those values quite drastically as for why you should run those ignition levels um, while they are um, the most friendly let's say that way for exhaust testing or for emissions testing the other thing is that they don't heat up your engine excessively most newer cars that have a cold start procedure will actually retard the ignition timing so meaning they are pulling it towards top dead center or even after top dead center so that the spark plugs fire or the combustion happens when the exhaust valve is already slightly open that will act basically as a heater for the catalytic converter as it will extend the combustion into the exhaust manifold therefore heating up your exhaust gases and your catalytic converter gets up to temp quicker this is important for newer exhaust or emission standards like uh, euro 4 5 and 6. you can also regulate the idle rpm by the ignition timing so if you run more or less ignition timing actually the idle rpm varies because the engine is producing more or less power with different ignition timing with more ignition timing so more advanced for example if we would run 20 degrees advance instead of let's say 10 
your idle would jump up from maybe 900 to 1100 rpm. This is one way where you can control your idle rpm if you for example do not have an idler control valve but that's not really the thing we want to look at now but it is something where stock issues tend to also tweak idle rpm slightly if for example the idler control valve is uh, failing or not working properly. Going into NA load, this is the axis we can see here or the fields we can see here. So that would be between 90 and 100 kPa in this case, or if you would run TPS at full throttle in a naturally aspirated car. This is dependent on what your engine, how your engine is configured. This depends heavily on the fuel you are using, the uh, compression ratio you are using. Most older cars that use from a 9.0 to 11.0 compression ratio use something in, uh, along the lines of a 30 um, or so degrees of ignition timing as you can see here at maximum rpm and when you go lower in the rpm range that ignition timing drops a bit. This is because the burning process is obviously the same speed as it is on a lower rpm but with a higher RPM, the flame front is the same speed, but actually has to start at a earlier point in the ignition cycle. So a few degrees earlier, because obviously you want it to finish or to exert the maximum amount of force on the crankshaft at the same time where it did before. So that's why you have to add a few degrees of ignition timing until uh, red line from for example 4000 rpm or wherever you are below that so on lower rpms where your torque is the maximum usually that's going to be about 3000 to 4000 rpm on a street application na engine you need the uh, ignition timing to be quite a bit lower otherwise your engine will experience knock. This is due to the excess cylinder pressure that would appear here because most of the camshafts that are uh, in stock cars are optimized to fill the engine with as much air as possible within these uh, specific areas so between 2000 rpm and 4000 rpm. So that's why you need to retard your ignition timing here uh, a slight bit more than for example on the higher rpm areas if you have a tuned na engine that's going to be somewhat different this is uh, just the application or just the explanation for this when you are going into the cruise areas you are actually going to see that there is more ignition timing to be had there this is only to increase the efficiency and because there's not as much air entering the combustion chamber, you can run more ignition timing, which will make in turn the engine more, more efficient. Uh, this can also be expanded to the lower RPMs a little bit, but not as drastically as the higher RPMs. As you can see, we are lotting a, uh, running a lot more ignition timing right here than we are here. Going into boost, we also need to reduce our ignition time for the same reason we are when uh, going on the lower RPM values because boost pressure increases the combustion chamber pressure and therefore the risk of knock basically is uh, more than with a naturally aspirated application not only because we are introducing uh, fresh air but also on the exhaust side of things we are experiencing back pressure which forces old exhaust gas on back into the combustion chamber so we are mixing the old exhaust gases with new gases and therefore we are creating a less efficient mixture. The ignition timing we are going to run here or you have to retard by is highly dependent on your setup. If you for example are running a very large turbo with a tubular manifold the ignition timing that needs to be retarded until like one bar or 14 psi for example with a good fuel is going to be much less than with a very small turbocharger and a log style manifold that has a lot of back pressure because those problems with the back pressure as i explained before can lead to a lot of excess exhaust gas in the combustion chamber even when the 
old combustion stroke basically is already done. So those values can vary from anywhere between, let's stay at one bar for example, from 15 to maybe even 25 if you're running a good and high octane fuel. This also depends on the fueling as I said immensely. If you're running 91 octane or even 87 octane even on a stock engine then that means the ignition timing has to be a lot lower than if you would run 93 or even uh, ethanol for example. On ethanol there is a much higher uh, value to be achieved because ethanol not only has a higher octane rating but it also burns much cooler so the complete temperature of the combustion chamber is lower in general which reduces the likelihood of knock uh, so with depending on the fuel you can consider turning up timing but you always have to look at knock something else that is important to keep note of is the maximum timing that actually makes power or mbt um, so that is the point at where the maximum point of timing advance is reached until the car is making power and above that it is not able to make more power and it is just uh, you are just adding ignition timing and nothing else is happening beyond that point and that's where you want to stay at for example on an NA application this can be reached with normal fuels especially if the engine isn't very high compression like 9.4 to 1 9.5 to 1 or something that usually is about like 30 to 32 degrees above that there's nothing really to be gained anymore and uh, on a turbo engine though this is something different and usually only able to reach only able to be reached uh, with uh, uh, ethanol or something and even then you are going to see that at higher boost levels nothing above 20 to 25 degrees is going to give you any more power so that mbt timing that is also going to go lower the more boost pressure you're adding and also cannot be reached under boost in most applications under higher boost pressures with a normal fuel that is for example pump gas um, because it's just before that point you're going to reach mbt the engine is going to be knocking and pinging and it's not going to make power at that level and probably grenading itself before it's going to reach that point very low compression engines with lower boost levels might be something different because the lower your compression ratio is the more boost you can run or the more uh, timing events you can run. Also something to note here is that on stock cars they run basically a over advanced timing map and determining by fuel or how many knock events the ECU detects they retard timing from that onwards. This started in the let's say late 1990s that they were doing that so with the 180s for example in the VW world they would run a overly advanced ignition timing map for example if you would run on the one bar or 14 psi if you would run they would have a programmed let's say imaginary 20 degrees but with 93 octane fuel the ECU would see knock or pinging from the knock sensors and after a specific amount of knock events happening or the knock events that the knock sensor is detecting it pulls a certain amount of timing from each cylinder or where that knock is actually happening and therefore reducing the timing in those cylinders this is pretty clever and makes the engine or gives the engine the potential to make the most power possible while still keeping the engine alive and the cool thing is with that if you run better fuel you can actually achieve more power that is given your engine is utilizing a over advanced timing map like this and is actually retarding timing at those lower octane rated fuels this is mostly the case on turbo cars and performance engines like gti's or whatever you want to call them that are running decent boost pressures and have a tendency to make 
more horsepower than like 100 horsepower per liter. That's basically it for ignition timing, at least the basics and explaining how it works, what it is. If you have any questions regarding that, leave it in the comments down below. I will answer anything that comes up. And as usual, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.